and welcome to the Bald Watch Guy. Welcome to the latest episode of the Watch Table. Today we have a special guest, live from Discord, Shepard. Shepard, how are you doing today, mate? I am doing pretty darn good, mate. I've just had a little sip of whiskey, a little tipple. I'm feeling good, and I'm excited to talk about watches today. <laughs> You're not the only one. I'm actually sipping off a whiskey a bit myself. So tell me, Shepard, how did the hell did you get into watch collecting? Um, so for me, I sell houses for a living and a really great way into introducing yourself and talking to clients is immediately looking at what's on their wrist. And as a young estate agent, I had a Casio and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But you always get a little bit envious when you see the nice wealthy people with the Rolexes and the Omegas on their wrist. Okay. So. And which one was it? Which Casio did you own? Um, I had a Casio G-Shock. I cannot, for the life of me, remember the numbers and the, the reference that goes along with it, but it was the sporty one that measured your steps, because at the time, it was just during lockdown when I first started collecting watches. I made sure to get out of my bedroom frequently, so I would uh, try and lose some weight, because at the time, I was just drinking and eating and smoking and doing fuck all else. So I got the watch as my first watch. Uh, it was a Casio G-Shock. It counted my steps, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was nice. Oh, nice! And then you decided to uh, collecting something better, like uh, a Seiko or something. What was the next step? Uh, so I made a massive jump. Um, I, I sorry, I think it was it's still in 2020 or whenever. It, I think it was 2020. Uh, my girlfriend at the time was studying in uh, Southampton University and I headed down to the one of the watch dealers down there and I thought, you know what? I've had a good year so far. I'm going to treat myself. And I bought a Breitling Super Ocean 44 as my first ever luxury watch. Oh, still in the collection? Still in the collection. It's here just to the left of me. Uh, I haven't wound it. I haven't set the time. I don't wear it as much as I should anymore, but that's just down to the other bits that I've I've got myself. Uh, it's something uh, we all have. I'm on, I have a box full of them, and most of them are unwound because I, most of the time, I, it, maybe it's sp specifically me, I pick one watch for the week and I wear it for the rest of the week. You, you got the same problem, or? Yeah. So with my most recent purchase, I ha I bought some little tweezer things for the uh, the spring bar, so I didn't scratch the lugs. And that's been on a leather strap, it's been on a NATO, it's been back on the bracelet, and I wear it. I thought I would only wear it over the weekends, um, obviously because where I work, I work at a desk as well for the majority of the time. And I don't want to desk surf the clasp, um, but I've been wearing it every day, um, and it's still currently on my wrist. Oh, nice. Well, currently I have nothing on the wrist. It seems to be a tradition every time we record a, a podcast for some reason. So what's on the wrist with you today? So currently on my wrist today, I've got the Rolex Submariner. Um, I'll just pop it here. Here she is. Beautiful piece. You picked it up recently, I believe, correct? Yeah, so this was a very, very recent purchase. I think this is only two weeks old in the collection. Um, but yeah, it was, it was very impulsy. I've been on the waiting list at my AD for this for about three and a half years from when I first started collecting. I think when I bought the uh, the Super Ocean, um, I, I bought it because it looked so much like a Submariner. And I thought, well, I've got quite big, chunky wrists, and wrists anyway. So I thought, well, screw it. These are the two watches that, you know, my first one and my uh, most recent one. You know, being a, a, young, a young buck, I thought, screw it. The, the Super Ocean is as close to a Submariner that I can afford at the moment. And now I finally got the uh, the piece that I've been waiting for three and a half years for. You you probably know I own a Samaritan myself, and I, I'm I never got into the honeymoon phase. How is it treating you? If, do you feel like it's an accomplishment? Is it the, it's it everything it's dreamed about? For me, every watch I buy is an accomplishment purely because of the the vast amount of money that I spend on them. But you know the the Rolex the Rolex of Mariner. <sighs> I don't want to say it's bland, but it is as normal iconic. as you can get. Yeah, it, it is It is so iconic. You don't need bells and whistles. You don't need flashy fluted bezels. You don't need white gold. It is, at the end of the day, a steel dive watch. 
and it serves a purpose. I don't think it's meant. You know, I don't think you're meant to be staring at it constantly, day in, day out, like I do some of my other more flashy pieces, and just thinking, "Quah, look at that." This for me, it's it's been my every day for the last two weeks. Um, it, it helps. Haven't scratched it up yet, but well, I say that I can see a big old scratch on the clasp <laughs> already. But it's a matter of yeah. time. You cannot avoid it. Uh, yeah. I've been keeping my scratch free for close to six months until I bumped against the door, and, and yeah. <laughs> Well, the sounds of it, you don't wear it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I I hardly wear it. It's it's a problem. I always gravitate to my same watch. I mostly wear my Speedmaster uh, on a day to day basis. It's it's the piece mm. that I give the most love. I believe you picked one up as well in the in the past, correct? Yeah. Again, I um this this was very much an impulse buy. Um, so this is my Speedmaster Professional lovely lovely piece i uh wear this not as much as i should um so i have i forget to wind it quite a lot the uh, sapphire again, one I, I guess. yeah that's it yeah it's got a beautiful display back i've I always wanted a nice fancy piece with a display back in it um i thought about getting some one of the new longine lines that has got display back mm-hmm. but that just you know when you you buy something and it doesn't quite scratch the itch this for me scratched the itch and peeled the scab off. Um, I love this watch. I thought about getting the Hesselite crystal, but again, you know, I, I wanted the sapphire sandwich. I didn't want to risk scratching it or having to buff it out. I just thought, screw it, Going pull the band aid off, for the sapphire. go straight for the sapphire one because it looks absolutely phenomenal. Mine is scratched all over. Uh, it's it's well loved, but we all gravitate to different watches in the end. Uh, so yeah. why do you think it doesn't get a lot of wrist time? Uh, I think it's because my collection has got so big. I say big. It, it, it's not it's not big. It consists of four or five watches that I wear. But because I've bought them in such a short space of time, I mean, I've only been collecting since 2020. So over the last four years, I've picked up a few pieces that we'll, we'll show later on. Um, and it's just one of those watches where I just keep to the side and I think, yeah, I'll wear you for a specific occasion. You know, it's you know, if I'm going out for dinner, I'll wear something else. This this one I wear sort of if I'm out with mates, if I'm out in town. I don't. It's not too flashy. It's, mm-hmm. you know... It's well, again. It's just a steel watch. You can you can wear it a bit as a dress watch to a certain degree. The new bracelet. Uh, yeah, I I agree. But when we uh, look at some of my other pieces, it, it for me, if I want to wear something quite dressy or quite flashy, something else takes precedent. That's but, a nice reference. Well, it's not a presidential Rolex you have, but I believe you have a date just. I do have a date just. This was the first Rolex I bought. Um, this means a lot to me. Ooh, this one. what a configuration. Jubilee bracelet, fluted bezel, the blue. That's a hard sort of yeah. Exactly that. Again, I registered for this watch when I first registered for my other Rolex, uh, the sub. So I, I registered for these at the same time, and I got this one about a year and a bit ago. Um, this one means a lot to me because it sort of commemorates me being with my partner for five years. Oh, congratulations. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, I haven't proposed yet, so you know, that, yes, that is in the on the cards. But I think buying a house first uh, and settling down. Instead of know, buying a wedding ring, you can buy her lady. Buy a watch. Then. Yeah, yeah. If I had some of her collection that I've bought her over the years, I'd uh, highlight that as well. But yeah, no, this one you know, it, for me, this was um, five years with my girlfriend. Um, I'd also just had the best year I'd ever have um, in selling houses in a state agency in a, in a little village in Surrey. Um, you know, not being too crude or going into money, but I base I just got a salary a, a month's pay that was five figures, and I thought, screw it, that's the best I think I'll ever be paid. Um, and it just so happened that this the month later I got the call for this. So I just thought, you know, the stars have aligned here. So you spun that all in one go? <laughs> uh, yeah, not quite. No, 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 no. I, I had I had a few pennies left over. Um, but yeah, the, this ate up a little bit of uh, of that paycheck. But, you know, when you uh, when you don't have many outgoings like me, a uh, very, very privileged position, you can buy these things without having to think too much about them. And 
even if you do have some crazy expenses going forwards, then you can just liquidate them and get the cash flow quite quickly. I think this is a very, very popular piece, so it shouldn't take too long to go. Well, yeah, the, mar the watch market is a bit softer right now, but... Yeah, it is. So, uh... I think I think that's a lot to do with the uh, the economic crisis, with what's going on with uh, inflation and interest rates, sort of worldwide. Doesn't matter where you are. I, th I feel at the minute, I think everyone's feeling the pinch. Uh, do you have a passion for Rolex specifically? Uh, because I see a lot of pieces Rolex wise. Um, Anything I else don't... in the collection? Yeah, I've got a few other bits and pieces. One that can that gets confused for a Rolex quite a lot, and this is another one that means a lot to me as well. Ah. Uh... SMG Black Bay. It is indeed. Uh, this one, similarly, um, I just sold a house at £1.5 million. Pounds. I, I bought this to mark the occasion. It was, again, sort of along the same line as uh, my Rolex. I'd spent three years with my girlfriend at this point when I bought this. Not that, not that I buy all my watches to mark timestamps of my relationship, <laughs> but it just so happened to. Uh, but no, again, similar to why I bought the Super Ocean, this for me, it had the the the, um, the Submariner feel. I'd spent a lot of time researching Tudor, and you know, I, I know they're very very different mm -hmm. in in sort of looks, but this gets mistaken for a Rolex a lot. It looks like um, the, the classic uh, the classic uh, Submariner from back in the day. I, I own a, a Tudor Black Bay myself. And for some reason, I prefer the Black Bay over the Submariner. I think I I don't prefer the Black Bay over the Submariner, but I do. You know, the the Black Bay has a special place in my heart because it has that sort of vintage feel about it. It has something a little bit of age to it without looking old. It has a bit of class. I don't know what it is. For me, it just looks class. I mean, I know I've got the the gaunty steel and gold version, which is you know for some isn't really uh, the look. But yeah, I, I know I know what you mean. I quite like the Black Bay. It it has that vintage feel without it being from like the eighties or the seventies. There's only one big problem with the forty one. It's just such a chunky boy. Like the thickness mm. of it, I, I I hardly can pull it off. Yeah, this is this is very thick, but if I put it on my wrist, it probably I can just, works. It it works, but that's because you know, not that I'm a fat man. <laughs> I, I am not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> You're no, no, that's fine. At this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, but on on my wrist, it it does work. I mean, because I've I've got seven and a half, seven and a quarter inch wrists, depending on the heat. You know, I, I need something that's a little bit chunky. So for me, wearing anything that's 41 or less, you know, it, 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 it does dwarf the, the, the watch. I mean, if we just go back mm -hmm. to my um, Super Ocean, for example. You have uh, three divers, I'm... right? I do have three divers. I do. Yeah. Not that, yeah. It's sort of, um, it's not trying, I'm not trying to take it in one direction. I do have others. But um, it, it it all led up to the to the Submariner. You started out with uh, the Super Ocean, then you went to the Black Bay, and you finally finished the journey with the beautiful uh, Submariner. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just quickly going back to size again. Yeah, this is forty four, and on some people's wrists, this would look like an absolute behemoth. It would not work on me. Did no, you? Yeah. Didn't you have a Hydro Conquest at one point as well? I did have a Hydro Conquest again. <laughs> I don't, not that I'm obsessed with dive watches, but <laughs> again, I bought that because I'd just done a load of research on Longines, and I really like them as a brand. I love the fact that they haven't changed their logo since they first started manufacturing watches. But then I wore it, and then I was I was then going back to my Super Ocean, and I was just sort of thinking I shouldn't have bought this. I actually don't like. I bought. I bought into the brand because I liked the brand and the story behind it, but mm -hmm. I didn't actually like the watch itself. And I sold it. I probably only owned it for about six months, and then I just thought, I, I really don't want this in my collection anymore. And then I just flogged it on eBay. Was that your worst uh, watch purchase, or? Um, no, I don't have it anymore. But I think my worst purchase was the Tudor Black Bay Pro. Oh, now, 
Why? I, I actually like that watch. Okay, it's I not for really me, like, but... I really like that watch as well. But, again, not that I'm a Rolex fanboy or anything, but I really want the Explorer 2. That's my last one. That's the... If I if I was to buy one more watch and just go, that's it. Stop. It's the Explorer Two. It's that for me. I love the polar dial. I love the orange GMT hand, mm. which is why when Tudor released the Black Bay Pro, I thought, oh yeah, that's a that's a bit of me. That it's, was quite the itch. Yeah, it's less. Th- it's more than half the cost. Yeah, it's more than half the cost of the the Explorer Two. It has that original rolex explorer 2 feel about it i'm i'm gonna get that and then i uh i bought it at the ad mm-hmm. and then again i just i just didn't wear it I, I i had so i had so many other pieces that i was wearing more of i would wear it out you know if i was going out on a walk or if i was you know going out into the wilderness i would wear it as my yeah this is my explorer watch yeah you know i have it on a nato strap and i'd strap monster it just to try and keep it fresh but again it was a 39 mil it was very very chunky yes okay it worked on my wrist because i got Mm. fat wrists but after a couple of weeks or i'd say maybe two two or three months i just put it in my watch box and i thought yeah i don't really wear it i don't wear it enough um so similarly when i had the call to um buy my rolex i sold that to sort of help with the funds in buying it yeah, it's 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 good to uh, let pieces go from time to time. I think we've all been there in our collecting journey. Sometimes you think you want something, you get hyped, and it's a trap. I, mm. I, I fell in a bit as well. Like for example, you want the Explorer too, and you see something else that you can get right away, and you think you're gonna it's gonna scratch the itch, but in the end, it ends up being a bit disappointing. Mm. You should uh, you should be able to hire a watch for for a few weeks to see if you like it enough. Try before you buy with luxury timepieces. Oh, no, that would go down awfully. Yes. How long will it take before watches get stolen, destroyed? <laughs> the, yeah, the insurance on that would be. Pff, I couldn't even put a figure on that. It would never happen, really, if, would it? If you would do that in London, the insurance will probably be higher than the. The, the watch itself. For the watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. You, you walk down like uh, Bond Street and your arm gets cut off with a machete. Yeah, don't, you, don't, you don't want that. You don't want that. I, and just on the topic of um, sort of watch thievery, I mean, I've been very lucky to not really be the recipient of any of that sort of stuff. You, you hear about it and you read it a lot. And um, I think that last year, I think I was telling you uh, a while ago when we were just chatting, Mm-hmm. Um, there was this gentleman, a, a 31 year old who was celebrating at a private event in Mayfair and he was wearing a fake watch. I want to stress this was fake. He was wearing a Patek Philippe Nautilus with a diamond encrusted bezel and the security there was openly filming him, sending it to a oh, group God. chat with, in his friends. And bearing in mind, this is a private event where it's like 1400 pounds per person. And this was this guy's 31st birthday at a private event. The security guard filmed him, put it on this WhatsApp group chat. And then these, uh, I think it was like three or four guys in this Mercedes, like skirt up behind him, mm-hmm. jump out the car. And rather than trying to take the watch off of him, this this is a, like, he's built like a brick shit house, Like a big, massive, a big fella, yeah. He's a, he's a big fella as well. And he could probably handle himself in a fight. So rather than just trying to steal the watch or cut his hat, they just stab him to death. They just they, they just they just kill him over a fake watch. And it's just you you read about these stories, and I I could never I would never in a million years after just because that's a private event. And you think if you're in a private area where you're surrounded by security, you're you're you, going you to be should, safe. You think you'd be, be bubble right? wrapped. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Well, so what's whenever I go to London rise? now. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So whenever I go into London, if I ever go into London, I either don't wear anything or I wear a Casio, because it's just it's absolutely not worth it. If you think, oh, you know, I'll 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 roll my sleeve down or I'll keep my hands in my pockets. You could be going into H and M. You could be going into any store, and then it you, someone catches a glimpse of it. You genuinely you have no idea who who's who's watching, That's... and it's absolutely petrifying. 
that's why I own still a Casio and a few, and a few moon swatches. Yeah. I, I can wear that's those with, with feeling safe. And, and even on like, I, I don't even like to leave my watches at my place and they're mostly in the safe in the bank. Yeah. Uh, and even then I'm still insured just for, for safety reasons. It, it makes a hobby harder and harder to enjoy, especially when you're talking about the big boys, Rolex, AP, Patek. Mm. Luckily, if, if I wear my Speedmaster, I feel more safe because then you really attract only collectors who know the brand. Um, so. Yeah. Whereas but, anyone sees a diver and thinks that's a Rolex, that's worth money. It's, I think it's the same with a lot of luxury goods like handbags or phones or shoes. Anything that has like a, a branded cult following is you, you're making yourself a, a target. A target, yeah. And Talk- you just need to be more inter- like sensible. Indeed. Talking about uh, watch brands, do you own anything else outside of Tudor and um, and Rolex? I do. Um, so I've got obviously my Tudors, I've got my Breitling, I've got my Rolex. But one that I think is a very, very underrated piece and one that I absolutely adore is this. Um, this is my IWC Spitfire. Ah, oh, that's something else. And you put it on the NATO strap. Beautiful. So the uh, the Spitfire comes already on the NATO. It does it? Uh, it it's... doesn't actually come on a bracelet. And I think like a Milanese or a sort of bracelet, a little bit similar to the Omega, this would look class. I have to um, be honest, I know not enough about RWC. I, I know a boutique, I know uh, there's a boutique uh, in Antwerp that, and I know the owner a bit. I really mm. should pop in. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful, man. beautiful. I um, I have I don't do, I haven't done a lot of research on IWC, but I know their history is very all over the place with the company going left and right and then turning upside. The, the, the IWC has such a a crazy history, and it's you know if you're in the watch community and you're interested about the story behind the brand, you won't be disappointed with the IWC. It's very all over the place with you know, bankruptcy and and all sorts. It's it's a good read. Is um, that a, a 40, 41 millimeter? This is this is my smallest watch. Now I'm going to sound like a hypocrite because of what I said earlier about wearing forty one watches, nothing below. This is a thirty nine. Ah. However, however, the only reason I can only just about get away with it is the lug to lug. I don't know. If, I don't know how well you can tell from the camera, but the lugs do stick out quite far. So it does feel like it's wrapping itself around the... I mean, if I just do that for a second. Yeah. Actually... The, the, uh, lugs, the lugs wrap around your wrist, which make it feel just that little bit bigger. It looks it looks beautiful, and I, I like, I like uh, the patina on it. Gives it a vintage look. Some call that faux tina, don't they? Yes, but... well... In my opinion, adding Fotina to a watch is not necessarily a bad thing if it's in the trend and the design of the watch and if it fits. Why mm. not? It, it, we, do it, we do it with the Black Bay as well. And... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a massive... Um, well, you know, I think most young boys, like the uh, the idea of looking into the history of the Second World War and the Spitfire and the Battle of Britain and anything English... Mm-hmm. And I and I think this, which sort of represents sort of the, the dials in a in a Spitfire aircraft with those sword hands, it just it 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 scratches the pilot's watch itch with it looking very very classic and sort of it it, it does not that it has any his, history this watch per se because mm-hmm. I think it's only a one of you know it, it's it's its only line the Spitfire um, this sort of type. I know you've got the other ones. Uh, the other pilots' watches, like the Marks, I could do. I have no idea what mark they're up to now. Probably like ten or eleven, but this just sort of screams sort of like nineteen forty-five Battle of Britain. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just mm-hmm. this for me is really cool, and the canvas it strap is. as well, the olive. It just looks very military. That I think that's what I'm trying to say. It looks like a military watch without it being one. Um, is very cool. What is it? What is um? Can you take it out for fishing because you're an avid fisherman? <laughs> or uh, the water resistance is absolutely... It's not good, the water resistance on this. I mean, I think it's like eight meters. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, not that I go... Not If I'm going fishing, you know, I, I'm not going to be going eight meters underwater unless I'm battling some absolutely crazy crocodile gar fish that's been imported from the States. <laughs> um, 
but yeah i mean i <clears throat> i don't tend to really wear watches when i'm fishing um i have done but then when you're sort of with me when i when i go fishing i do a lot of lure fishing for pike and predator fish and you tend to just sort of like push your way through bushes and trees uh -huh. and that's just an excuse for you either to scratch your watch knock it or damage it or lose it uh, it's just it's just a non for me again it's an unnecessary risk that i don't necessarily want to take i understand and I, it's and like i know some people will probably go oh but you meant to wear a watch you know scratches tell stories get that but also i kind of want to make it look as pristine as possible for as long as possible I'm I'm a bit the same, but it's a bit doubled for me. Like my Speedmaster, I I bang it against everything, and I absolutely do not care because it's my daily watch and every scratch is memory. Mm. But when I talk about my Submariner, ooh, please no scratches. Yeah. Well, eventually yeah. I get them, and I'm not gonna cry about it. Like the the only scratch that's that's bad is the first one you get on the watch, and then you get over it, <laughs> and then you go on. Yeah, I was like that with my uh, with my Breitling. I see if I can try and show the camera. Um, but I got this scratch pretty quickly after owning it. Uh, it's here on the lug. I don't know how well that's going to show up. It's a small one, yeah, I can see it on it's the ju top. It's just there. I mean, because it's like a satin finish, for me, it, it, it really, really bugs me. And I got this scratch the same day I got the watch. <laughs> yeah, typical. <laughs> typical. <laughs> so I was I was walking down uh, some high street in Southampton. Uh -huh. I think it's called Portswood Road. Uh, I'd just come out of Goldsmiths after picking this up, and a Deliveroo driver was cycling behind me and didn't ring his bell, had no idea he was behind me. I turned around, and then in Ooh. doing so, the bike hit the watch. Oh, no. So I immediately, and he fell off the bike. I want to, you know, rather than checking to see if he was okay, I was looking at my watch, making sure my watch was okay. <laughs> he was okay, granted, but yeah, you know, he apologised for uh, cycling so quickly when you weren't supposed to cycle down Portswood Road. But we'll forget that. But yeah, I mean, well, I think once you've got your first scratch or your first dent in the watch, you get all over the it. other, you get over it. It's yeah. like, um, I think it's sort of similar. I mean, not that I have, but. I think it's similar to getting a brand new car. You know, you drive it like a like an old woman until you get that first knock, and then you get more comfortable with the size. And I think that's the same with a watch. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. when you when you wear a watch, you sort of you know you flail your arm around a little is, bit. Is that an escape valve on the side? It is. Oh, I did not know the Super Ocean had one. Yeah, so the uh, the Super Ocean Forty Four has one. Mm -hmm. uh, the others don't. Oh, okay. So this. This one goes a kilometre underwater. Yes. Which is crazy. Which we all really need around our wrist just in case. Oh, one hundred percent. You know, when when I'm when I'm taking a shower with this watch on, I'm glad that it's got the water resistance of a kilometre because I, you know I like to live dangerous city as well. Um, push it yeah, to no, the limit. I, yeah, push it to the limit. Yeah. So, <laughs> sometimes I wear it while doing the washing up, and that's really pushing the boat out for me. <laughs> but yeah no it's um it's a crazy bit of engineering isn't it indeed beautiful collection but if push comes to shove and you have to sell everything and you can only keep one watch which one would it be um i think the one watch that i would keep is the Datejust. personally i i this one for me is it's everything i want it, you know you can wear this casually mm -hmm. you can wear it flashy I wear it to work. I wear it when I'm not at work. I wear it to dinner. I wear it when I'm out shopping sometimes if I know that I'm not going to be in like a high dense populated area. It, this is it, my first Rolex. It's probably, st even though I love my sub, this is still my favorite Rolex that they, that they produce. There is nothing I like more than Sh this. Shepard, just in case if your missus watches a video also because you bought it when you were five years together, <laughs> Just to add it in for, safe, for uh, safety reasons. Yes, I, I, you're absolutely right. I love this watch because it reminds me of how long I've spent with my girlfriend. And uh, it reminds me of that stuff. I, 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 try <laughs> no. to, I will try to edit it and see if I can make it work. Yeah, yeah add, it, add it in post. Add it in post for me. Um, yeah, no, no, I, I love you lots if, you, if you're saying this. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that, that too. But, you know, from... From like a watch perspective, it's this is if I had to sell everything tomorrow, this is the one I keep. Uh, and any 100%. plans for the future? 
Um, yeah, I mean, we briefly touched on the uh, the Explorer Two, mm-hmm. I think, um, from Rolex as well. I mean, in terms of other watches, um, I am very, very interested in Bremont again because of the sort of. I mean, it's a it's still a very new watch brand to be charging that much money. Uh, but I, I do like the Bremont stuff. I like their story. I like that their factory isn't too far away from me either. So I do want to go and uh, sort of research it a little bit more. British watchmakers um, are doing amazing stuff. Uh, Christopher oh, Ward, I believe Studio Underdog is British as well? It is. I, I haven't done a lot of research in Christopher Ward. I, they, they come up quite a lot on my uh, YouTube adverts when I'm scrolling through other watch influencers on, online. And Christopher Ward is always one that gets advertised to me, and I'm, I always think that you know that they do look quite cool, but they're, yeah, they're I just quite haven't... affordable as well for like a first yeah. absolute piece entry level. I it, it think it, I've heard from many people it's uh, an amazing bargain. The only problem I have with it is like none of the ads in my neighborhood or in my country even carry the brand. Mm. And always an so issue. You probably really... have to order it online or something, which is has its risks, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, I have a good connection with a local watchmaker that I'm gonna pluck for uh, one day and probably interview as well. <laughs> when you become when you become rich and famous off of these podcasts, which um, will never happen. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a brand affiliated link. Use the that bald watch guy uh, two for twenty percent off Christopher Ward. <laughs> You're not planning to sell off the whole collection to to buy like one crazy piece? Nah. Ever thought nah, of doing that? N- no. I'm not a huge fan of Audemars. I'm not a huge fan of Patek. I know some people will, you know, raise their eyebrows, drop their jaw, and go, "What the hell is this weird English guy on about?" Um, but none, none of them really like interest me. I I like what I like, I guess, and that's mm-hmm. for me. Wearing the best part of fifteen grand, twenty grand, thirty thousand, like on your wrist, that. In my head, for me personally, that is absolutely ridiculous. If I was, if I, you know, if I was a millionaire and money wasn't an issue, then yeah, sure, fuck it. I'd probably go out and, you know, paint the town red with spending money. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for me right now, Rolex, Omega, Tudor, IWC, my one Breitling, that's plenty for me. Yes, absolutely plenty. Well, it's a beautiful collection. You can be proud of it, and at least you're wearing almost all of them on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, or, uh, I should wear my Super Ocean a little bit more. It was my first watch. That's it is my child. first watch. Yeah, we all uh, have. No, one. it's <laughs> we do, we do. But no, I, I, I sort of been wearing a lot of you know my Casio a lot more recently, just just because it's it's comfortable. It's you know it's a rubber uh-huh. strap. Um, yeah, I mean, you don't have you don't have to wear a fancy watch, and I think that's the that's something that's really important that a lot of watch people need to get in their heads a lot of the time. Your watches don't have to be four figures, five figures absolutely for not, them to no. be to be good. You know, a, a Casio is absolutely sufficient. A Seiko, some you know, other low, lower end watches, if you will. You know, ones that have got ETA movements and stuff. You don't have to spend loads of like thousands of pounds, thousands of dollars on watches. It's true. My nephew recently bought his first uh, automatic watch, and there was a nice Seiko Five. Oh, nice. Yeah, a Seiko Five. That- yeah, see that's that's exactly it. You know, you can you can you don't have to sp- you don't have to break the bank to get a nice watch, and I think the Seiko Five is is really really nice. To be fair, at least you started off with a Casio. My first watch was a Daniel Wellington. So, <laughs> well, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna berate you for that, but well, you know, is he, what it is. Here's a chance for the audience. If I reach two thousand subscribers, I will destroy the watch live on camera. <laughs> I uh, right. Let me just quickly log, log up YouTube. I'm gonna make a couple of fake Google accounts and start <laughs> no, no, subscribing no, 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 to you because no, 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 I want to no. see that. I want to see that. But uh, yeah, no, it's um, it's good. Anyways, anything you want to plug? Uh, Shepherd underscore fishing is my Instagram. I I keep track of fish that I catch. Other than that, nah. I'm I'm just I'm just a, I'm just a guy, man. All right. Anyways, Shepard, thank you for your time. This was the Bald Watch guy. See you next time. See ya.